already clear that Ian will go down as one of the most destructive storms in Florida history. This morning, more than two million people in Florida are without power. A treacherous night ahead for Florida as darkness begins to fall and Hurricane Ian continues its catastrophic rampage. Winds of 150 miles an hour, catastrophic storm surge. Hurricane Ian made landfall tied as the fifth most powerful storm ever to hit the United States. Ian roared ashore, packing 155 mile per hour winds just shy of a Category 5. September 27th was a date that I'll never forget. Um, it was 24 hours before the storm. Never anticipated what the next 48 hours were truly gonna be like and how it was gonna completely change me and my community forever. 40 mile an hour winds, category four, stays as a four into Wednesday. Florida's western Gulf Coast bracing for a direct hit with evacuation orders in effect for the entire Tampa Bay area. 24 hours before the storm, they had it predicted to go up and hit Tampa, which is about two hours north of us. In the next 12 hours, their projections changed. And we realized that my backyard, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, Pine Island, was gonna see the full strength of this hurricane. The Category 4 storm moving at an excruciatingly slow pace. Only 8 miles per hour forward progress. Hurricane Ian was a prime example of Mother Nature. Mother Nature is beautiful. She does so many wonderful things for our planet. She creates. She gives birth. She also taught us that she can take it away as quick as she wants. Mother Nature showed my community for 12 hours that she's in control here. And she made sure we got to witness and feel her full strength. continues to face, and we probably won't know until the sun comes up again how much damage there actually is. Sadly tonight, there is much we do not know, especially about the barrier islands where this incredibly powerful storm came ashore. We've heard little from Captiva, little from Sanibel, very little from the five barrier islands along Charlotte County. We know they had a storm like nothing that coast had ever seen. We don't yet know what happened to anyone who stayed behind. Today is going to be a day of assessing the damage and figuring out how to move forward. What Hurricane Ian truly caused in my community can never be described. You've just got to see it. It destroyed so many memories that we've had in so many places in this community, and it affected everybody. The storm was over 50 miles long and sat on us for over 12 hours. Nobody anticipated the true wreckage and carnage that this storm was going to create for this community. It was only two miles shy of being a Category 5 hurricane. When I say this storm hit us, it hit us hard. And it stayed there consistently blowing over 100 miles per hour. Anybody that's ever been through a hurricane will tell you it's bad. But anybody that sat through this one will tell you it's the worst. When Ian arrived in Southwest Florida, it came with a vengeance. But the grim reality of this storm's raw power defies imagination. That's gonna rank as one of the top five hurricanes to ever hit the Florida Peninsula. The massive surge of water leaving entire communities completely underwater. 
Forecasters had warned that the storm surge would be unsurvivable, up to 18 feet in some spots. It wasn't like anything we've ever seen. I mean, it shook everybody to its core in this whole community. From the basic man to the rich man, we all felt its effects. Being a third generation Floridian, hurricanes is just something that you get used to. Um, they happen every couple of years all across our beautiful state. And generally, you know, they cause a little devastation, but we rebuild very quickly. The next morning was crazy. We had no power, no water, no internet, no cell service. So it was very hard to communicate with anybody. But you kept hearing rumors about how bad it was further outside your neighborhoods. And when we went exploring, we saw how bad it really was. I mean, Matt Lachey was completely wiped off from this earth. There was over two miles of road completely turned into I guess you would say a pass now, a waterway, it completely took out the whole road system. Then you heard about Sanibel Bridge collapsed in four different places. Now these two areas are so important to the community because they are the only passage on and off our barrier islands, which is about 30 miles worth of land and over 100,000 residents between both islands. And now they're completely stranded from the storm. Search and rescues across Southwest Florida, Marnie, they are not slowing down. Search teams and even volunteers are getting on boats and helicopters, rushing over to barrier islands along the coast, trying to help people who might still be trapped in their homes. 24 hours after the storm, our main purpose, locals, Coast Guard, federal, state, was to do search and rescue and get people off these islands that could not sustain living. There was no power, so generators and fuel were some of the big commodities that we needed for this community to sustain life day to day. But it was insane to see the Coast Guard and local captains like myself in this boat parade carrying supplies and grabbing people and coming back. It most definitely showed the strength of the community. It most definitely showed that our community is strong and we were helping each other through this whole process. But it was nice to see the state and federal level also helping us as well. Now earlier I explained that we lost two major infrastructure bridgeways. Matt Lachey Bridge and Sanibel Bridge. Our governor, Ron DeSantis, and our local sheriff, Carmine, got together and pretty much figured out a way to get these bridges up and going in 10 days. From there, we could start getting power trucks to the islands and start restoring power because Pine Island itself feeds power to all the other barrier islands. Sanibel, Captiva, North Captiva, Yusepa Island, Cabbage Key. These are all power generated islands from one source, Pine Island. You know, Brandon calls me, he's a famous YouTuber, he finds cell phones and stuff in waters or whatever his stuff is, but he's honestly a good friend, he's a bro. He calls me up, day three, I got a bunch of supplies, man, I see what you're doing, I see how bad it is. I thought it was gonna hit my mom's backyard. I'm on my way. So many things kept happening and we just had to fix it. And the more we fixed it, the stronger we felt. So Brandon shows up, brings a lot of supplies, and some of the crucial things that he brought were generators that islands needed to sustain living. There's people out there that are on oxygen. You know, during this hurricane, our hospitals were flooded. They could only take so many people in. So we were trying to help sustain life out on these islands for people who can just get through day by day with surviving. One of my best friends, Tito Ortiz, flew in. I picked him up, he brought a bunch of money. We did a huge fuel pickup, and we headed back on our supply run. 
We did supply runs with Tito for two days and thankfully we had him just for his strength alone. I mean, lifting 200 pound generators on and off a boat around docks that are snapped in half and debris everywhere in the water made it challenging nonetheless. And he was there to help. You know, Tito was hands on more than he was anything else during his help. And we needed it. We had three major ground zeroes with this hurricane. Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel, and Matt Lachey. We got a police escort with Tito to go do some meet and greets and bring morale up to these people that have just been working nine days straight like us, 15 hour days, no power, no water. But they're still trying to help my community. so many places I saw, places where mom and dad first met, places I used to party at as a kid in college. So many memories that that's all it is now, it's just memories. The, the buildings are gone, the places where those memories are held or destroyed. That was a tough day. That was a tough day. We got to see things before anybody else. We got access before any media. like bone chilling and extremely sad. Just destruction as far as you could see. It was like a Ukrainian Iraqi war zone 10 minutes from my house. And it blew my mind, it blew my mind. It's still like, I mean, we're three weeks out and I'm still just, you still see it, you still smell it, it's still here, it's, it's never going away, the reminder of what this hurricane did to my community. 10 4 we'll be unloading. Right now we've got about, we got to distribute between you guys and NCIC, but right now we have three propane cans ready for you and another five gas cans. You are the man, thank you very much. No problem. night last night. Oh, crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's just bedlam right now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's in a weird way. It's fun. Everybody's working together. Yeah. Everybody's working yeah. together. It seemed like throughout this whole storm, how it shook us to our infrastructure, there was constant objectives. One next hurdle to jump, one next hurdle to leap, with no end in sight. But the strength of our community is what I feel like is gonna get us there. And we are, we are. I mean, we're in week three now. We can finally talk about it. First couple weeks were really emotional. But this last week, most definitely have seen the turnaround in the community, starting to see the future and where we're going and where we're going to rebuild to. And it's a beautiful sight to see. I mean, the strength of community is probably one of the greatest lessons I've learned through this whole hurricane. 
that if you have a strong community, you can conquer anything, any obstacle. You can literally build bridges. And it wasn't just locals. It was state officials from all over the U.S., federal officials all over the U.S., here for one cause. They all have one simple goal, to get the community back on its feet. Yeah, there's something, there's something proud about being an American, but there's something even more proud of, of a community that shows their strength in times of struggles. This storm was definitely always and ever will have changed and reshaped my yard, my community. But at the end of the day, I can honestly say, we're most definitely gonna be stronger the next time. <laughs>